Hi, welcome along to Barbecue Life UK, where we really, really like to barbecue. Today we are going to be cooking a hot and fast pork shoulder for pulled pork on the Aldi Camaro. So I've picked myself up a pork shoulder from uh, Morrison's. It was currently on offer at £2 a kilo. So this is just over 2 kilogram in weight before we do any trimming or taking any skin off. So I picked this piece because as you can see on the end here, it's got a nice marbling of fat through, right the way through the meat. So I'm hoping that that is gonna give me a really nice flavor and a nice moist uh, joint once that's cooked down. So if you can see the smoke coming across me, it's because we've already got this cooking while I'm filming this piece. So hopefully you can still see me through the smoke. So we start off by we need to remove the skin and the fat off the top. So we just take a knife. Now the butcher is kind of half taken this off and half left it on. So we flap it over. If you can't flap it over, then just take a corner and just start to cut away from there. But we flap it over as much as we can we just take a knife and long lazy strokes not too much pressure and we're just cutting through the top layer of fat so we can just peel that skin back and just bit by bit by bit taking it off once we've removed that top layer of skin now it's time to start tackling the fat underneath so if you've got any really thick really dense pockets of fat then this is where we need to start trimming these out because they are not going to render down and they're not going to make good eating. So they will just sit there, become gelatinous, and then you're just going to end up with a mouthful of gelatinous fat. So we trim these out. The easiest way to do it is to just get yourself a little knife and just push underneath it. That's going to help you know how dense this piece of fat is to begin with. And then just pull it along and trim these pieces out. So you want to do that on both sides, any really hard pieces of fat. So as you can see, I've trimmed quite a piece of quite a bit of fat out of this joint. So keep hold of that fat, don't waste it because you can grind that um, in with your beef to add some extra fat into your burgers, or you can um, put it into pork burgers and add a bit more fat into them as well, and it works really well. So don't waste it. Bag it up, stick it in a freezer, label it up to what it is, and next time you're grinding your own meat to make your burgers, add it in for an extra special treat. So we've got our joint, it's all prepped, it's now time to get our rub on. So the rub we are using today is the Rusty Barbecue Company's Cherry Cola. Now you can use any rub you like, but I really like this rub and it works really well on pork and it's going to give me a really nice um, bark on the outside. So as a binder today, I've decided that I'm using um, maple syrup. Now I've never used maple syrup before as a binder, but it came to me in the middle of the night the other night when all them good ideas flood into my brain. And um, I've decided that we're just gonna use a small amount of that, um, rub it all in, all sides, and then we're gonna go in with our rub. And then you're gonna really massage that rub in so that you've got um, a really nice covering. I'm gonna stick that in the fridge for an hour and just let that rub really set in and it'll form a really nice sort of sugary sheen over the top the way that this rub works. So I really like um, the way that that looks. Now it's called ribbon wing dust, but it does work really well on pork shoulder as well. But I've had this on wings. Um, I haven't had it on ribs yet, but I've had it on wings and I know that it works really well. You get really nice sticky glaze before you stick it on. So it's come to lighting our Kamado time. So going in with two wax woodies, I've got my old charcoal pushed to the outside. Like I said in my last video about setting up, if you've missed that, then please do check out the iCard at the top. I'll leave it in the description below so that you don't miss out on that on how to set up your Audi Kamado for different styles of cooks. So I've pushed that old charcoal out. I've left some big old charcoal in the middle as well as topping it up with new stuff. So the basket's probably about half full. And we're going in with a couple of wax woodies. I'm gonna get them lit and vent all the vents open, lid open, and let them take. Once they've gone out, now's the time to add your smoking wood if you want to. Now, I always forget to put my smoking wood in. I'll put the deflector in and then I add it in. I have to take it back out and put it in afterwards. So add your smoking wood now. I like to add one piece 
where the fire already is and one piece further away so that as the fire spreads you've got a smoke over a period of time so get that in and then get your deflector plate and your grill grates in place on the top get your lid shut and start to dial in your temperatures so I'm going for around 150 to 160 degrees C on this cook today so anywhere around there I, I had a person message me um, the other day saying that they were aiming for 110 and the barbecue had gone up to 126 and they didn't know what to do don't panic just because we say 150 110 250 a little bit of variance in there is fine you're going to really struggle to dial in your temperature exactly to the degree so I'm aiming for around 150, 160, but if I go 165, I don't matter. If I'm sitting at 145, I don't matter. I'm just going to leave it dialed in and I'm not touching it for this entire cook. So we're not wrapping. We're just going to let it sit. I've got a temperature probe in there and we're just going to let it sit. So once we've got that temperature dialed in, we're going on with our pork. So that's sitting directly above the um, deflector plate. I'm going to move my um, temperature probe over slightly because it's slightly too close to the meat. So move my ambient temperature probe over, get that on, and that is where it's going to sit. And we're not going to touch it. We've got the probe in there. I'm using the Inkbird IBT 4XS, and that is going to monitor my temperatures throughout the entire cook. And we're going to take it all the way up to 96 degrees C. That is when I'm going to go in. First time I'm going to open the lid. And I'm going to check it with my instant read thermometer, make sure that the temperature is correct. And I just want to see how it probes. It should start probing like butter. If it doesn't, then I'm going to bring you back in and tell you what I did afterwards. So we'll leave it there and uh, we'll see what it's like in a few hours time. So as I said, I was going to check it when my probe reached 96 degrees and then check it for tenderness. So checking for tenderness and it's tender all the way around apart from one little spot. So when I check the temperature of that spot, it's only 94. So two degrees, you wouldn't think it's going to be a massive amount of difference. But I know by taking that to anywhere between 96 and 98, that's really going to tender back up. So I'm just going to shut the lid back down, leave it probed where it is, let that come up three degrees, and then I'm going to come back and check it again. So 15 minutes later, we've reached another three degrees higher. So the original point is now sitting at 99 and I'm gonna check for tenderness in that area that was tight before and it's tender. So hold the temperature there and, and that's now reading 96, which is your ideal temperature for pulled pork. So we're gonna take this off, loosely wrap it in foil because I don't want that bark to go soft and leave it for half an hour before we do anything. So once that half an hour is up, get yourself a nice thick glove on and then a set of uh, nitrile latex gloves. Or if you've got bear claws, use bear claws or just a set of forks, whatever works for yourself. And we want to start pulling that meat. So as you can see, I give it a squeeze and it is so super tender. You're going to have a really nice crunch from that bark that bark is really solid compared to the rest of the meat and that is exactly what I was looking for today so we just work it through until it is all completely pulled and that is where we are at now so we're going to give it a taste so here we are all completely pulled so I want to try a bit of the the pulled bit first Beautifully tender, slight smoke from that apple wood. Oh, that's really nice. That cherry flavour has managed to get its way in to the meat. There's a bit of sweetness, which is really nice. So I'm going to have to have a small piece of bark because I want to save the bark for my dinner. There's a real crunch to that bark and a real sweet cherry cola sort of flavour on the top. So this cook has gone exactly as planned. So 
it took uh, three and a half hours was when I reached 96 in what I believed was the thickest part of the meat. Another 15 minutes, so three and three quarter hours is how long it took to take. My temperature sat at about 166. It started to creep up. I wandered off for a little while, come back and it was at 176. So I just tapped the bottom vent slightly closed and it took about 25 minutes to just come back down to that 166, which is, I would have liked it a little bit lower than that, but that's where it sat and the end result is absolutely perfect. But as I've said many times before, just because this one took me three and three quarter hours as a two kilogram piece of meat, doesn't mean that yours is gonna take that long. Always go by temperature and not by time. So I've got this ready and it's about two and a half hours early from where I want it tonight. So I'm gonna get foil back over the top in a minute. That's still really hot in that dish. It's going into a cool box wrapped in a towel with a hot water bottle in the bottom and that is going to keep it warm ready for what I want it for dinner with tonight. So if you like what we're doing here at Barbecue Life UK then please do ring that bell for subscribe first. Please subscribe first, ring that bell for notifications, leave me a comment underneath, let me know what you think. If there's anything you want to see me cook then please do leave me a comment and let me know what that is and make sure you like the video. Interaction is so important to making this channel a success with YouTube. So please do do something for me. Thank you very much for watching. Please check out my other AK cooks over here and subscribe over here. Cheers.